Sin Fronteras Western New York. This is for you, mis hermanas y hermanos. Where you can voice your thoughts on how we live, work, and play in Western New York. Buffalo is in a renaissance, and Latinos are a huge part of our city's growth. We, we want to hear your voice. Llámame 837-1112. Or hit us up on Facebook 24-7, seven days a week. Talk with Samantha and Michelle. Sin Fronteras Western New York every Friday at 1 on WUFO 1080 AM. Wepa! Presented by the Hispanic Heritage Council of Western New York. Dedicated to preserving the history of Hispanics in Western New York for future generations. You're listening to Sin Fronteras Western New York at 1. Good afternoon, I'm Samantha Martinez. And I'm Michelle Agosto. A judge orders an extension of FEMA aid for Puerto Rican storm evacuees. And Sin Fronteras Western New York will bring you the latest events happening in our community this weekend, including today's live studio guests, Erica Leon Torres and Kelly Hernandez from Planned Parenthood. And DNA tests are in the works for separated migrant children in an attempt to reunite families that were separated at the border. The WEPA segment is brought to you by Pleat Home Care. Want to make sure your loved one is cared for properly? Pleat Home Care can teach you how to provide in-home care and get paid. Don't trust a stranger to cook meals, run errands, and give emotional support to your ailing relative. If your loved one needs in-home care, call Pleat Home Care in Buffalo, New York. 716-261-2111. Hablamos Español. Y taquerías ranchos Las Delicias, serving authentic Mexican and Venezuelan food. Taqueria Rancho Las Delicias, the one and only Mexican restaurant that has the best original authentic Mexican food. Sopapillas, burritos, menudo, caldo de res, and the best Mexican tacos in town. Mmm, que delicia. And we have happy hour Monday through Friday from 3 to 6. Taqueria Rancho Las Delicias, 1516 Niagara Street, Buffalo, New York. Call us for reservation at 716-882-2800. 786-882-2800. Taqueria Rancho Las Delicias, the one and only Mexican restaurant in Buffalo. Follow New York. Y número 12 en el Top Billboard Latino esta semana. Están escuchando a Ozuna en Única. Sin Fronteras West New York at One starts right now. Salgo a gastarle uno poco. Música en el lampo pa' que te relaje. Al que me la baje uno poco. Puedo reconocer la de ver su celaje. Única. Tiene la disco explota, todo el mundo me la mira, pide conmigo nada más. Y 
The time is 104. Sin Fronteras West New York is bringing you continuing coverage of the recovery efforts in Puerto Rico. A federal judge ordered FEMA to continue to pay for temporary housing for Puerto Ricans displaced by Hurricane Maria for another 20 days. The decision will allow Puerto Rican evacuees benefiting from FEMA's decision for temporary sheltering assistance program to remain in government paid hotel rooms until the time of July 24th. The court will hold further hearings to determine whether an additional extension is warranted. The aid was supposed to end on Saturday, but it was extended on July 4th. A Harvard study published last month estimates that close to 5,000 people died as a result of Hurricane Maria. The ongoing immigration crisis continues to unfold. According to a federal official, DNA testing is being conducted as part of the process to reunite some more than 2,000 children who have been separated from their parents at the southern border. Officials say the practice is being used to identify victims of human trafficking and ensure only true family members are reunited. But immigrant activist groups say they slam the move because they test are an invasion of privacy and could be a problem for young children who cannot give consent. Today is a deadline for officials to make sure every separated parent can contact their child. By July 10th, children younger than five years old must be reunited with their parents. And by July 26th, all children should be reunited with their families. 2,300 children have been separated from their parents since the Trump administration began separating migrant families back in May. Coming up next, According to a study by Child Trends, 24% of Hispanic females will have an unintended birth before the age of 20, compared to only 10% of white females and 21% of black females. We'll talk to Erica Leon Torres and Kelly Hernandez from Planned Parenthood. Learn how you can talk to your teens and delay adolescent pregnancies. And now Shakira y Maluma in Chalaslando. <laughs> Sepa lo que ambos tenemos Que comemos de una fruta prohibida Nos encanta y lo sabemos <risa> Yo no necesito ningún otro Don Juan Que me abra la puerta cuando llego a un restaurante En San no necesito más flores Tú calladito, baby, te todos los rumores Lo nuestro es ilegal y no te voy a negar Que yo pago la condena por besarte wow. Sé que a ti te pasa igual y no me puedes negar ya cometí el error de enamorarme yeah, yeah. Yo vine a verte, a entretenerme Y me robaste un beso que no piensas devolverme Me sentía volando, me iba escapando Cuando menos pensaba ya me estabas abrazando Y si yo sí, no, no pares ya Tú has convertido en una enfermedad Y si yo sí, no si no más Que mientras más te sueltas más aumentas mi ansiedad Así mismo lo quiso el destino No busques problemas donde no los hay, los hay, los hay Can, can, can destino No te olvides que somos amigos Yo busco problemas donde no los hay, los hay, los hay Que yo no entiendo la necesidad De vernos a solas y matarnos en la oscuridad Tú te vas y mi cuerpo aquí sigue pidiendo más To Saint Fronteras, Western New York. This is Michelle Agosto, and I'm here live in the studio with two beautiful, wonderful guests from Planned Parenthood. Our first guest is Erica Leon Torres, and our second is Kelly Hernandez. And I want to thank you both for being here. Thank you. 
Thank you for having us. Oh, please. I'm so happy that you're back, Erica. So, Erica, you're like our, our most popular famous guest. <laughs> Sorry. <here. laughs> <laughs> so, this is your third time coming on Sin Fronteras. The first time you were here as part of the Hurricane Maria efforts. Yes. Which we thank you very much for doing such an amazing job with that. And then um, you came again for Planned Parenthood, and again, you're here for that, to talk about Planned Parenthood and the good work that Planned Parenthood does. Yes. Um, so your title is the Bilingual Outreach and Education Supervisor. That is correct. Can you talk, and I know that you were talking about an initiative um, promoting families talking together. So I thought maybe we can start there. If you can talk a little bit about what that's supposed to do, promoting families talking together. Okay. Well, Families Talking Together is an evidence-based program. It was designed um, to help empower parents in our community so that they're able to speak to their children in regards to delaying sex, right? Um, and the beautiful thing about this program is that we're able to take this program right to people's doors. You know, our educators do a great job in implementing this and basically we just meet parents where they're at. We have been able to work with community center, uh, some of our local schools, you know, and we have partnered up with like um, groups like Say Yes uh, to Education Buffalo. They have opened the doors. Their navigators have been excellent in the Saturday Academy and allowing us to promote families talking together and being able to educate their parents right at the school. So that's really important, like the development of partnerships so that you can Absolutely, get the word out, right? Yes. So talking about getting the word out, right? I know that, Kelly, you're here um, as the WellCare Health Plan's uh, marketing point person, right? And so marketing really is a huge thing um, in general, but I'd like to kind of bring you into this conversation about well care health plans and I know that's right under the umbrella of Planned Parenthood so can you talk about what you do at, um, in that position? Absolutely. Sure. First of all thank you so much for having oh, me. You're welcome. Um, what we do at well care we help um, in the community we help members of the community to sign up for health insurance. We know that there are um, a lot of people that whether they're working or growing families they don't make the time sometimes or they don't have the time to go and apply for, for the uh, Medicaid services. So we come out, we actually help them obtain health insurance through the New York State Marketplace of Health, which is a website that anybody can go to and actually sign up for health insurance. But what we provide is the convenience that we can come to your home, we can meet you at work, we can meet you at a coffee shop sometimes, we'll buy you coffee. Um, <laughs> well, we can't buy you coffee, but we, we can share with you. Um, yeah, let's clarify that. Absolutely, yes. No, we can't buy you the coffee, but um, the point is we make, we make ourselves available. Um, we do a lot of home visits at times because we know people are working until 6 o'clock at night, so you'll see our reps out there. Um, again, everything is based on income and family size, and we can do the Medicaid application, uh, Child Health Plus applications, as well as the Essential Plan. Uh, this is really great information because uh, in the United States, Latinos are one of the most un underrepresented and uninsured populations. Can you talk to me about that and how you help this group sign up for uh, health, health, health insurance? Absolutely. Like I said, um, it's, it's critical that we remain involved in the community. We try to do it. My market, you asked me about my marketing mm -hmm. job. So what we do is we try to um, pair up with as many agencies as possible. This is why this was so important for me. It's Working a very grassroots effort, is what it sounds like. Absolutely. And this is why it was so important to, to link up with Erica and, um, and working with the families that she worked with, that we were able to work with, um, educating, just edu opening up conversations about, you know, empowering the parents and letting them know, listen, um, yeah, not only do you need a physical and not only do you take your kids to the, you know, to the doctor for checkups, but it's also important to talk to them and ask them about these crucial questions, you know, what, what, how do you feel about yeah, the beauty that is this, yeah, word. that we were able to actually link <laughs> yes. up families. Like, mm -hmm. we were offering um, education for the parents, and at the same time, you know, sometimes some other stuff comes up, like health insurance, or we're not sure where to go. So that's where we actually combined and linked up and said, okay, so you can see Kelly, she offers great insurance. So we were able to serve a family with different, you know, uh, services at one visit. Mm -hmm. So that was beautiful. That was a, we, we did Absolutely. great there. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, Erica, you offer some great community uh, education for the Latino Hispanic community. Uh, one in three Latino statistics show one in three Latina females will be ha will have an unintended. What does that mean? Unintended pregnancies mean an unplanned pregnancy before the age of twenty. So I'm going to talk in Spanish now because this program of yours is actually 
also conducted in Spanish. Yes, both English and Spanish, but yeah, it's focused on, on Spanish, on the Latino community. So, entonces, los padres que están escuchando, vamos a hablar ahora como usted como padre puede navegar la conversación para hablar de sus hijos para retrasar que su hijo tenga sexo y si lo haga, que lo haga con cuidado. Este, si quieres llamar y tiene preguntas para Erika, si por favor puede llamar al número 716-837-1112. Erika, si me puedes hablar del programa de Familias Hablando Unidas. Es un programa que fue escrito por un doctor latino, este, estudiaron la comunidad latina so, es algo que no solamente da la información y las herramientas para hablar con los padres pero es algo que es cultural verdad exactamente que, 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 que los padres van a poder entender por su cultura sabe a veces este, otras culturas como um, eh, comunidades de otra, este, no son iguales como de nosotras, ¿verdad? Exactamente. Y, y a veces como nosotros, como no pega, ¿no? Exacto. ¿Me puede hablar un poco de eso, por favor? Lo más importante y la belleza de este programa es que se enfoca específicamente en nosotros darle el poder para atrás a los padres, ¿verdad? So, cuando yo estaba mirando a Families Talking Together, Familias Hablando Unidas, you know, a, a veces la gente dice, oh, pero mira, habla con mi hijo. En realidad, nuestro enfoque son los padres, ¿verdad? Porque ahora estamos en una época que a veces los padres se rinden, se dan por vencido y dicen, ya yo no puedo puedo con esta muchacha, uh -huh. ya yo no puedo con este nene. So, este programa se enfoca en los padres, en darle el poder a los padres, educarlos para que ellos tengan las herramientas y puedan comunicarse con sus hijos. No es fácil, ni no es más fácil decirlo que hacerlo, pero para eso está este programa, que es tan importante. Entonces nosotros este, visitamos las familias en las casas. Nosotros, como dijo Kelly, uh, we meet people where they're at. Vamos a donde los padres estén, lo que sean más cómodos. Y lo más importante de este programa, que no es un programa para llevarlo en, uh, hacer una comunidad con 10 o 15 personas a la vez. Es importante tener ese uh, environment que es más íntimo, uh -huh. donde el papá y la mamá se pueden sentar con nuestros uh, educadores uh -huh. y hablar íntimamente de algún problema o cuál sido you know, cuál es el enfoque de ellos cuáles son uh, las barreras que ellos enfrentan con sus hijos uh, you know, que, cuáles son las cosas que le preocupan y de esa manera nosotros podemos educarlo que okay, es un ambiente íntimo que puede ser de grupos pequeños o a solas, ¿verdad? Absolutely. Either or large groups or small groups. Uh, we prefer smaller groups because we want to focus on one-on-one -on -one with parents. Y esta comunidad, you know, es grande, pero también es pequeña y todo el mundo se conoce, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. so, solo le damos la oportunidad a los padres a compartir en privado, donde ellos pueden compartir su historia nada más con nuestros educadores. Para los padres, eso a veces también que son medios religiosos, ¿verdad? Que a veces como no encuentra cómo entrar, cómo hablar, le quiere hablar a sus hijos, pero no sabes, no encuentras las palabras. Me puede dar un saborcito, como que unos puntositos que me puede dar, ¿verdad? Exactamente. Para esos sí, sí. que, ten, que tengan temor. Sí, muchos padres, and I'm glad, me alegro que haya traído este punto, uh, dice, ay, pero tú sabes, nuestra iglesia no podemos hacer esto. Y, y yo le digo, mira, estás preparando a tu hijo. Lo bello de este programa es que lo puedes ajustar. No cambiar la información porque toda la información es misma. La puede ajustar dependiendo la religión. Uh, puede ser que su niño, en vez de estar interesado en las niñas, está interesado en los niños o viceversa. Hay que ser realista, ¿verdad? Este programa lo puedes ajustar. So, hemos tenido um, situaciones donde los padres son uh, cristianos, por ejemplo, católicos, y van a la iglesia y dicen, Erika, you know, en la iglesia no hablamos de esto. Y yo digo, bueno, tome las herramientas que le estamos dando. Nosotros no estamos aquí para modificar ni para cambiar la manera de los padres pensar. Estamos simplemente para darles las herramientas y ellos deciden cómo ellos van a implementar el programa donde sus hijos. ¿Verdad? Porque ustedes dan como tácticas, ¿no? Tácticas y herramientas um, y practicamos con los padres, practicamos, nos sentamos y decimos que okay, si yo fuera tu hija Lisa, ¿cómo le vas a hablar? Y practicamos para nuevamente empower them, darle el poder y dejarle saber que los padres sí hacen una diferencia. Eso es lo más importante de, de este programa, es que los padres sí hacen una diferencia y tenemos que uh, ¿cómo se dice? Volvernos nuevamente a coger control de nuestros niños y lo que estamos haciendo y, y eso es algo que podemos hacer individual en las casas, ¿verdad? Pero también como una comunidad. Y esto es lo que me encanta de este programa, que me da la oportunidad para trabajar con personas en diferentes áreas de la comunidad. Sí, eso está muy bueno que usted se sienta a practicar la palabra, ¿sabe? Para que no se ponga nervioso. Este sí, sí, exactamente. Practican. este y, y como dije, a veces los padres tienen otras situaciones. Um, que están fuera de nuestras manos, entonces ahí pues a veces los referimos para diferentes programas. So I like that you, you know, you're talking about the role playing, like if yes. there's something that, to make families more comfortable in talking to their kids about things that are kind of uncomfortable, right? Yes. Sex is not always comfortable to talk about, about especially, especially in a Latino family. Mm -hmm. But I, I really love the idea of you having these intimate meetings with families, because yes. what that does is build trust. 
Absolutely. Right? And that's essential. So if they want to tell you about an issue that they may be having or want to share something, you know, nobody likes to put their business out there. So if you're that's talking right. about your child and you know that they're going through something and they have that intimacy, that trust with you, that's really important. Wouldn't you agree? I absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many families, when we reach them, they're in that stage where they're like, you know what, Erica, like, this girl's not listening to me, or this kid, he just doesn't want to hear it anymore. So again, we have, um, there we have to sit down, we have to talk to the parents, and, and first we have to work with the parent at first and empower them. For, her, for them to be able to feel confident enough to be able to have these conversations. Sometimes they've given up. And I told them it's not, you know, it's not too late. You know, what you experience is normal. Your child is going out there towards schools. And again, I always, my thing is this. We sometimes think that our schools are going to educate our, our kids about how to talk, you know, about sex and everything. And we do. Our educators do a great job. You know, our teachers out there in educating our children. But who's going to teach your child? the values that you have at home. Better than you. Mm -hmm. no better, better, better than, than you. you. So this is what I tell mom and dad. I said, who's the best advocate? Who's going to teach your child your values and what in this family? You. So you are the best advocate for your child. We do great job as educators, right? But in, in reality, our parents are the ones that hold that power. And a foundation at home, you know, a strong foundation, that's the key. It's the key element to when kids grow up and how they, you know, evolve and grow and how they, you know, talk about sex and how they learn. One of the questions you asked earlier, um, Stephanie, was about religion and how, I'm sorry, and how to bring up um, religion when they're saying, well, my religion dictates that I shouldn't talk about this. But it's proven in one of the um, training um, slides, because you, you do the presentation with all these slides, and one of the slides, it says it's proven that kids have said, you know, the thing that stopped me from having sexual relations at an early age, fue el respeto a Dios, the respect for God, or respect for whatever religious beliefs they have. So it's just, again, the conversation. Right. It's just, if you empower the parents, the rest is a beautiful thing. Right, and I would say Samantha probably knows more of this research than I, but just being in education, I say when parents and their children have a really positive relationship where they feel they can talk to one another and be honest about things, especially yes. things that may be uncomfortable, but you know, they find that way to adjust, like you were saying, they find a way to adjust, then I think that also prolongs um, their their wait time. Absolutely, yes. Michelle. Parents, you're absolutely right. You hit it on the head. Actually, research shows that parents that actually they talk to their children, they instill those values, those values that are important to their their home and their family, their expectations, and they set clear guidelines for their expectations. And every family, every parent looks different. But if they have this conversation from their with their child at an early age and ongoingly through adolescence, they will wait by 35 percent to have sex before they're ready. Yeah, that's a huge percentage. It definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something important that you just mentioned, um, just having this conversation over and over. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we make clear to the parents. Like, you know, this conversation is not just a one-time deal. At the end of our workshop, we like, oh, we set up a date when you talk to your child. But this is something we should be doing every day, touching base with our child, letting them know get we're there and we're watching. You know, we, we you're important to us, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's important. That's something that we tell our parents. Continue to talk. It will get easier over time to talk about sex. Just practice, continue to talk, you know, guide them and make sure you're offering that support not just once a while but every day absolutely so Kelly can you um, share if someone wants more information about well care health plans where they would go or what number they can call you at absolutely we have an office um, at 47 Court Street that's right here downtown Buffalo so it's convenient to everyone to come in um, but we do have reps available that are like I said able to come to your home or meet you at your work if you want to call 716-382-3776 to make an appointment. And Thank someone will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you, Kelly Hernandez and Erica, Planned Parenthood, where they can reach you. Well, right now, if, if anybody who's interested in the workshop, um, they could call me directly on my cell phone. I prefer my cell phone because okay. I, I have it with me all the time. It's 716. 207 to 1 to 4. Also, you have the option of texting me. If that's easier for you, you're more Absolutely. comfortable, because I understand sometimes it's very difficult to pick up that phone, um, but you can always text me and just say, Erica, hey, I'm interested in a workshop, and then I'll reach out to you. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for having you're us. Welcome. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. Tagrias Rancho's Las Delicias, serving authentic Mexican and Venezuelan food.
Taquería Rancho Las Delicias, the one and only Mexican restaurant that has the best original authentic Mexican food. Sopapillas, burritos, menudo, caldo de res, and the best Mexican tacos in town. Mmm, qué delicia. And we have happy hour Monday through Friday from 3 to 6. Taquería Rancho Las Delicias, 1516 Niagara Street, Buffalo, New York. Call us for reservation at 716-882-2800. 786-882-2800. Taquería Rancho Las Delicias, the one and only Mexican restaurant in Buffalo. Follow New York. The WebS segment is brought to you by Fleet Home Care. Want to make sure your loved one is cared for properly? Fleet Home Care can teach you how to provide in home care and get paid. Don't trust a stranger to cook meals, run errands, or give emotional support to your ailing relative. If your loved one needs in home care, call Fleet Home Care in Buffalo, New York. 716 261 2111. Hablamos Español. And welcome to our WEPA Weekend Update for July 6, 2018. Samantha and I hope that you all had a very happy Independence Day. On July 16th, between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., units will be holding a blood drive at Metro Roberts Realty on 2211 Sheridan Drive. One of our directors works for units, and this is a very important initiative for her. Take some time to donate blood and enhance or save someone's life. This is a great way to give back to your community and make a real difference. It doesn't cost you anything but a little time and the payoff for those in need is huge. Just look for the Donate Life Express bus and don't forget your ID. To schedule an appointment, call 716-512-7940 or go online to www.unytsblooddonor.org and use sponsor code 000175. And Baila Salsa Dance Company presents Sabor Latino Latin Night Special Edition with Hispanic Heritage Council friend DJ Vertigo spinning the mixes, ladies. On Friday, July 13th, they will start a dance lesson at 10 p.m. from Canadian instructors Haley and Miguel, followed by social dancing with the best music by DJ Vertigo, who will be playing a mix of all different styles of Latin music you love, like salsa, bachata, merengue, and even some cha-cha-cha. You have to be 21 and over with ID, $8 before 11 and $10 after 11. And lastly, Canal Sides Buffalo on display is here where local musicians and performers take over Canal Sides Boardwalk. Um, it starts tonight, Ju July 6th, and runs for three more Fridays through August 31st. Check out Buffalo Jazz Collective and Buffalo Brass Machine tonight. And on the 20th, Lancaster Steel Band and Latin Jazz Explosion. And August 10th, Master Chong Karate Verb Performance and Shakti Samba Dance, which sounds very interesting, sounds like so right? Much fun. So you want to go check it out. My good friend Eric Crittenden of Crit Music will be there, and he'll also he's also a BPS music teacher, so you always got to give a shout out to that. For more information, go to Canal Side Buffalo or Facebook, or call 436-7100. And now you know what to do and where to go in Buffalo. Everybody, wepa! 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 You got some really good events on there, uh, Michelle. I know, it's so exciting. I want to go. I remember <laughs> when Buffalo was boring, and now there's so much going on. Yes. Oh my God, we're growing. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Sin Fronteras West New York every Friday at 1. Remember, you can always catch Sin Fronteras West New York online and on our Facebook page whenever you want, all the time, 24-7. And before we close, Erica wants to do a quick thank you. Yes, Michelle. I want to, you know, especially thank um, the people that have worked closely with us with families talking together. Like, say yes to education, Talia Rodriguez, the, her navigators. We have Daytuan, H. Haiti, we have Hacker. We have all the educators who have been very supportive of our program. So it's important that, you know, that as a community we stick together and support these evidence based programs to make sure that our future is bright with our children. Absolutely. So, and thank you guys for supporting and Casimiro. He's always our number one supporter. Thank you so much. No, thank you. And so we're going to close in Fronteras, Western New York, with an oldie, but it is a New York classic from 1971. Remember those days, Samantha? Sonida Bestial. <laughs> <laughs> Sonida Bestial by Ricardo Ray and Bobby Cruz. Adios. Adios. I'm too young. I don't remember. You're funny, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Before we go, thank you so much. Adios. We'll see you next week. Adios.
All right, we'll see you next week. Have a great, great weekend.